This is the second video for our section on 4.7. We're given congruent angles in two different spots. We need to prove that segments are congruent. We've never done anything like this before. But here's the plan. The plan is to use the given information to show that the triangles are congruent. And once you do that, you can then argue that their corresponding parts are congruent because segment QT and segment ST are definitely corresponding parts. So we're given that angle one is congruent to angle two. We're also given that angle RTQ, that's this one, is congruent to angle RTS, that's this one. Is this enough to show that the triangles are congruent? Well, we have one pair of congruent angles in the shape. We also have a pair of congruent sides we can mark from the reflexive property. Proving the other pair of parts are congruent is going to be a little bit of a challenge. We haven't done this exactly yet, but you have two angles that are supplements of these angles. So if I was just to make up this measure, let's pretend that's 100 degrees. Wouldn't that make this 80 degrees? Well, if this angle is congruent to this angle, wouldn't it also be 100? So what does that mean about this angle? It too is going to be 80. We have two angles that are supplements. And they're supplements of congruent angles. So these two angles are supplements of angles that are congruent. That means they're congruent to each other. That's actually a different case of the congruent supplements theorem. So what you can then do is say that these angles are congruent. If you can argue that these angles are congruent, then your triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. Oops, I already used two arcs. I should use three here. Then these two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. And if the triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side, then their corresponding parts are congruent too. So these segments would be congruent by CPCTC. Here's an example of what a surveyor would do. We're going to use the following method to find the distance across a river from point N to point P. You don't want to directly measure the distance across a river. If you had something to measure it with, that would involve you maybe jumping in the river and swimming across or riding a boat across. You can set up an example like this where you can measure indirectly. If you place a stake at point K on the near side of this bank so that this segment NK is perpendicular to this segment NP, you can set that up. We can find the midpoint of this segment NK. That would be this guy. So if that's the midpoint, then we know these are congruent. We're going to locate a point L so that this segment NK is perpendicular to this segment KL. So we know that's a right angle as well. And we want points L, P, and M to be collinear. So we could have put this point L in a lot of places to make it perpendicular to that segment, but there's only one place that you can put it where all of these are going to be in a line. Now, what's happening there is you have vertical angles here as well that are congruent. That's not the best color. We have right angles here. We have congruent segments here, and we have congruent angles here. These triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. So if you want to find the distance from N to P, wouldn't that be the same thing as the distance from L to K? So you could measure this distance, maybe a little bit easier than you could measure that distance. That's what surveyors do. 